پالیسی has a direct implication uh, on our lives and our businesses and on economy as a whole. Uh, we also see that the monetary policy, uh, definitely the finance department or the finance ministry uh, at, the, at the national level and the finance departments at the provincial level uh, have uh, a very important uh, stake and also a very important role in it. But uh, the real player in the monetary policy is the State Bank of Pakistan. Uh, and that Is, is the real uh, backbone of any monetary policy uh, of uh, any particular country is their, uh, is their state bank or their federal reserve uh, because they are the ones who are uh, regulating and who are controlling the monetary policy. And definitely the policy is, is, is uh, then developed and approved by the parliament uh, for its implementation uh, across the board. Now, when we are talking about economic policy, Uh, then what we see is, is that the basic goals of the monetary policy are maximum feasible output. And that means we are trying to increase the output of our products, of our industries, of our different sectors. A high rate of growth. We, we talked about this in the economic policy. And again, trying to reach a double figure so that there is more employment and that would lead to more employment. A price stability which Again, we talked in the last module, and that was there has to be a control on inflation, a greater equity in the distribution of income and wealth, and then favorable balance of payments. So uh, these things uh, we did talk about in the economic policy also because they're very important for the economic policy. But when we are uh, subdividing the economic policy and we're talking about the monetary policy, then these are the things or elements which are very important for the monetary policy. And What we see is, is that right now in Pakistan, we have this challenge of balance of payments. And therefore, we have to go to institutions uh, like the IMF or to different friendly countries or to different international financial institutions and talk about getting loans so that uh, we do not default on our balance of payments. Uh, then again, like uh, I was mentioning that the importance of controlling inflation, because if there is a inflatory uh, process which we see right now in the country, then uh, things become uh, terribly bad. Uh, for the common citizen and life becomes miserable. And what we see is, is that then the purchasing power becomes less or the purchasing power uh, index uh, or the purchasing power parity index tends to be compromised at the end of the day. And uh, then another factor is that we see uh, that the rate of uh, interest for loans uh, also tends to become higher and therefore uh, the cash flow tends to be negatively affected. And that will result in businesses uh, being diminished uh, in their Uh, outreach uh, in their production and in their profitability. And that tends to then af affect employability as a whole and then create a bigger gap uh, in the distribution of wealth and make it more inequitable, whereas any monetary or economic policy should uh, focus on trying to create equity and minimizing the gap between the rich and poor and try to alleviate poverty to the best possible uh, way it can. So again, these different mechanisms and these different elements tend to contribute in the monetary policy uh, as a whole. And it is important that we tend to uh, protect all of them. Uh, the ideal policy is the policy of long run neutral money, which involves maximum feasible output and price stability in the long run. The monetary authority uses various instruments to control the supply of money. So again, what we see is, is that the state bank through the banks tends to control uh, the outflow of money because it doesn't want to have an inflationary trend. And therefore, through the control of money, it tries to promote uh, what we call savings. And therefore, uh, when we are talking about index points going up, uh, it can be uh, in uh, what we call in the interest rate. It can go up uh, so that uh, people tend to deposit more money and therefore the cash flow tend to be uh, minimized. So therefore, the role of the state bank is very important. We also talk about the different instruments such as instruments of credit control, which I was just talking about, the instruments can be divided into two categories. One is quantitative and the other is qualitative. So again, what we see is, is that these different elements tend to play a role 
uh, in bringing about stability within the overall economy of a particular country. Now, when we're talking about the quantitative approach, then we're talking about the credit control uh, vis-a-vis different banks. And that, again, becomes very important because the state bank, through its monetary policy, is regulating uh, all of the uh, financial institutions uh, within a country. Uh, then we talk about open market operations. And thirdly, we're talking about changes in the statutory reserve requirements, which again tend to restrict uh, the different banks. For example, uh, first we used to have a very open uh, auto automobile uh, leasing uh, or financing policy. But now that has been limited. Why? Uh, because uh, now the amount is 3 million. And secondly, we see that the interest rate has also gone up and there is a limitation uh, of uh, the banks of how uh, they can fund a particular vehicles. So many vehicles have been brought out of the ambit. We see that there is now uh, a upper limit uh, of financing. And thirdly, we see uh, that the interest rates have also gone up. So that is how things are done in a quantitative way, uh, basically vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the monetary policy. Uh, then we also see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that there are different methods in which we see that there is the bank when we're talking about the bank policy rate. Uh, so again, what is that rate? Just like I was talking about the open market operations, how are they controlled? How are the different players uh, controlled? How is the formal and the informal uh, market balanced out? We, we talk about enhancing cash reserve requirements, uh, which uh, again, uh, make sure that no banks tend to default. There is a statutory liquidity ratio, which has to be maintained by the different banks. And then there is a selective credit control. Again, where and who, to whom and when and where uh, are the banks basically lending. So through these different elements, through these different mechanisms, and through these different tools, the monetary policy uh, basically contributes towards the economic policy and ensures that there is monetary stability within the country. Thank you so much.